Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're gonna get 2020 started off with my first whiskey review of the new year with my favorite distillery, Lagavulin, and today we're gonna do the Face Shield 2017 Lagavulin 16-year-old distillery team pick. Also referred to Dustin as the distillery team exclusive. Ooh. Don't know quite what that means, um, other than the team actually picked this one. And we can't buy it in America. We cannot buy it in America. Every bottle I've ever seen has the little UK stamp on it, and it's 700 ml as opposed to the 750, yeah. so it was not intended for us. Yes. However, I'm glad I got my hands on it. And as a closet, hardcore Lagavulin fan, I know you are as well. I am definitely a fan. All right, so this particular one um, is actually, um, from what I've been able to read, a 16-year-old whiskey. 7,500 bottles were produced for the Face Shield, hope I'm saying that correctly, 2017, which I believe is in May every year. Does that sound right? May or June. I, it's, around that, it's in that area for sure. I'm pretty sure it's May. I think you're right. Yeah, and Lagavulin is the first uh, stop on the tour user, or at least the first day. Um, but this one, picked by the distillery team, who you would think have a good idea of what's good lag of one. I, I would assume. Would you not? At the very least, they know what they like. Yes. And they drink a lot of lag of one. So. And if you were going to, if you're a lag of one fan, mm -hmm. and you're going to listen to someone as far as what lag of ones you should pick, who better? That seems like the right answer to me. Who better than the distillery team? I can't think of one person besides me. All right, so Dustin. Except the master taster there, maybe. Yeah, Ian Berkeley. Yeah. He probably knocks it out of the park. All right, so this one is, again, is cast strength. It's 54.1% ABV. Hopefully you can pick that up on the camera. Um, I don't know this for sure, but uh, from what I've been able to glean from secondary whiskey review sites, this is uncolored and unshow filtered, which makes sense because it's yeah. cast strength. I think I read that as well. Yeah, so again, Lag of Wound isn't saying that it's natural color and cast strength, but I will say this, or that it's 16 years old, just to be completely transparent. But from everything I've been able to read, it's natural color. It is unshill filtered, and it is a 16-year-old single malt whiskey. Yeah. Obviously, multiple casts since they have 7,500 total bottles made. And so if you look at that color, now Mike mentioned the uh, casks on this. Because so, mm -hmm. that is, there's a little color to it. There is. I mean, it's not as dark as the normal 16-year-old, but I know the normal 16-year-old is colored. Where this one is ex-bourbon matured whiskey, and also, um, as we were reading, it is finished in ex-Moscatel. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. I believe you are. Moscatel wine casks. Very similar to the 2017 uh, Face Shield 16-year-old cast strength, which I also have, which I'll bring you here soon. But um, secondary finishing in these Moscatel casks, this one was, the Moscatel cast used for this finishing was previously used for a Kalila. So... It is not, it is a couple of refills as far as the sherry yeah. wine finishing. And I mean, you know, you're not getting a lot of color here. So it's, I doubt the color. It just looks like there's a little extra color. And we're talking 54%. Well, which I, tells me that it's the color of a little bit of sherry cask influence. Correct. Now, I will say this um, knowing that the normal 16 does have color and added, mm -hmm. and comparing to the 12 year old yeah. that does not have color, this is quite a bit darker than the 12 year old. Yep, but the 12 year old is pure bourbon. This is Correct. Got some sherry, so. Correct. So I, my opinion is the Moscatel cask did do something to it I, yeah. because it did it did darken up somewhat. So if there's color, they barely did it, and I, I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I agree with it too. And I think the fish shields are generally going to be uncolored. So agreed. We've talked too much about color now. Yes, we've gone on and on about it. <laughs> very wordy. Very wordy. All right, let's get into the nose. Tell you guys what you think about the nose, taste, uh, texture, and finish. Dustin, what are you picking up on the nose, buddy? So I'm getting your standard Lagavulin, that sweetness, that, you know, Lagavulin peat, but I am getting something else here. I want to say it's, I mean, there is like a bubble gum and sherry and just sort of a, there is something there that is really nice. I am not, Mike, able to give you a good descriptor here. Now, we had a couple of drinks today. Yes. We, we had a couple of guests over today. We've been drinking for a, a good part of the afternoon. Yes. The fact that we can actually bring you a review is... Um, Startling, surprising. It's the result of very small pours, and we have we have yes. taken about forty five minutes to an hour here since our last drink, so we've been yes, I had some pizza, respectable. All right, but this one to me, um, I have had it quite a bit more uh, than Dustin. I have it drink drank down to about this level here. I have actually bought a second bottle, but I've been sampling it for the last three or four months, so I'm a little bit more used to it than he is. 
So I do get some of the normal Lagavulin distillery characteristics, that very refined, very um, uh, aristocratic peat, mm -hmm. if I may yeah, steal yeah. a phrase. Um, but here's a couple other things that aren't normally with Lagavulins that I will say. First of all, I get a very charcoal note to it before you burn charcoal. I myself am a big mm -hmm. griller, especially in the summertime. Absolutely. And I love charcoal. That smell of charcoal, when you pull the pieces out of the bag before you light it on fire and they kind of yeah, turn yeah. the ash and get heat, I get a little bit of that charcoal note, which is a little different than the typical um, campfire or the put out campfire. So, of the lag tell me if this is crazy here, but I'm getting, and it may be a similar note that you're getting, I'm getting a little bit of a vegetable note. Okay, it, Very it, subtle, and it's mixed in with other things, but sure. I'm getting that, and I'm, I'm thinking that may be a similar thing to the charcoal. I think it is a complementary characteristic to the charcoal. Yes, I believe that is there, yeah. but the charcoal note is something that's kind of unique to Lagavulin's that I, I personally tasted, and I get really that charcoal note. Aside from that, man, I got to tell you, I've had enough time with this, and you know, we didn't have um, 30 minutes of this whiskey on wine, yeah. which lag of one that's extremely important. But since I have, I'll tell you a couple other things I've always picked up. One is carnitas pork. So okay. if you're familiar with um, Chipotle, or yeah. um, we have a couple of really nice authentic mix mixing restaurants here locally in town, there's a difference between true pork and carnitas. It's a carnitas is a more peppery pork, if you will. It's the seasoning that's kind cool. of correct. That magic. Correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I wouldn't call it like pulled pork like you get at a barbecue. Not that it isn't a similar meaty flavor that you normally get from Lagavulin's, but in general, it is carnitas. It is a peppery pork carnitas, but... Yeah, it's like pepper, but it's like a soft pepper. Very soft pepper, very, very soft. meaty, and also with a very nice pineapple with it. Now, pineapple, to no, me... We had, we, I had a pour of this earlier, and mm -hmm. I'm with you on the pineapple for sure. Pineapple to me is not something I get a ton. No, 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 no. It's it's one of those like you're trying to figure out what the fruit is because there's a lot of fruity flavors. Yes. And you know, like for example, in Lagavulin 16, you'll often bring up peach. Yes, very much. Which so. is a subtle thing until kind of it's been sitting in the glass for an hour, and then you know, it's like, oh wow, that is here. I think that's kind of the pineapple. It's at the end, maybe not as strong, but it's it's there, but it needs a little time to come out. It does. You know, and again, it doesn't necessarily jump out of the glass right now although it's there but again i've had it enough to where i know give it enough time 20 minutes or so it will become more prominent yeah. but the sweetness i guess is what i'm trying to say in this particular one is that pineapple note you know i um i can see even a little bit of barbecue yeah, okay so th this is where i'm going you said barbecue i'm glad you said that i've been to hawaii one time in my life mm -hmm. So and I went to a staged luau. You know, it was for oh, yeah. it was for tourists and everything. You pay hundred fifty dollars. I've been. There. I was at the same thing. Correct. So I mean, it's not really um, probably authentic compared to you know people if you grew up there or whatever. But I cannot escape that feeling of beautiful, perfect weather in Hawaii. I'm on Kauai, the island, and it is a Hawaiian barbecue. And to me, man, that is just what this is on the nose with a little bit of charcoal. So I mean, I had there. There's a, there's a pig you know, I, on the I can stake, that. rolling around. I, I was on Kona, a different island. island, but I'm getting the same thing here. Yes, when I was there. very yeah. much so. It's warm. You, you know, know, you know what I'm mean? starting to pick up, though, as we kind of dig into this? Give it to me. There's a slight little mint note. Always, to me, a mint yes. note with a cash drink lag of one. Always a mint note. Um, obviously, it's always there. Oh, excuse me, not obviously. It's always there <laughs> in the 12 for me. It might not be obvious for you. It's obvious for me. There's always that mid note in the 12 year old lag of yeah. Well, you know what? I, I, sometimes I get the candy cigarette thing, and I mm -hmm. think that might be there, but I'm getting mint more than the candy cigarette. And they're very similar, which I know they're not the same things. Sure. But when you're dealing with all the complexity of a lag of they're not that different because they got to kind of blend in. And this, I'm getting a little more mint than I'm getting candy cigarette. You know, I probably wouldn't have said mint. Although I have sent mint in many Lagavulin 12 reviews, yeah. so I've reviewed four or five of them um, on this channel, but I completely agree with you. It is there. Well, it's maybe just it's, something. it's a clove. You can call it that too, but when you said mint, it, it's absolutely there. I think mint's that, yeah. But it's, there is just a lot of subtle, nice, complex stuff here, and it's not the little Freud, oh, it's iodine and ashtray and medicine. This is... This has a lot of that fruity, sweet stuff that we talk about and kind of savor more. Yes. I mean, again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is the big aristocrat of the Isles. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the, whatever it is about Lagavulin and their distillate and the, the smoky flavor it gives off, it just feels more regal and refined, to me at least, than 
um, Lafroy or Ardbeck, which are my three favorite from the Alps, without question. No? Well, that Port Charlotte 10 kind of has me uh, debating the, the thought. Yeah, you were talking and, about it. And, the, the, and the, the Optimores. Sure, sure. It's up for debate. I'm just saying for me personally. I think we're, we're, we got four. Yes, very, very <laughs> much so. <laughs> they got them over the Kilholmans and whatnot, which I love, but the, these are the better ones. All right, and again, as far as the viscosity with any cash strength whiskey, I mean, it's very thick, it's very viscous. Um, the legs come down very, very slow. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I mean, I've got some yeah, killer very, legs going very on Very nice whiskey line, very nice whiskey yeah. line. So before we add some water, let's take a little sip of meat. Absolutely. Tell people what we think. So my first thought when I drink this is that it's got too much alcohol on it. Um, Yes, sir. Blue two alcohol forward for you? Um, well, it's the it's that I it, it's the alcohol is biting in a way that's keeping me from getting all the flavors out. Sure. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. And if we if this was our first drink of the night, it may not be an issue. But you know, we've had a couple drinks. Your tongue's a little sensitive to that biting alcohol. Sure. Um, still really good. You're getting tons of the 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 Ardbeg, Lafroy, just all of those, like, you know, peated whiskeys, mm -hmm. you're getting a little of everything, I think. I, I know it's weird when I'm talking about Lagavulin and I'm talking about I'm getting the smoke and the peat that I get in some of those other distilleries, but I'm telling you, I'm getting a little of that, where it feels like there's a little of everybody's uh, stuff going on here. You know you're in Southern Iowa when you yeah, drink this one. Yeah, that, that, that's that, that might sure. be it. You know you're in Southern Iowa. Now, for me, it's not as... Um, uh, fruit forward as far as the pineapple or even meaty forward as far as the carnitas on the palate as it was on the nose. For me, it's very Lagavulin-esque on the palate, cast drink Lagavulin. Kind of similar to the 12, but there's a far more sooty charcoal note on the palate, which is probably amped up by the high ABV. Yeah. You know, from that. But that's, I think that's part of why I'm starting to get a little bit of like, and I want to say like an aged Ardbeg, an aged Lafroy, mm -hmm. where like I'm getting, because I don't ever get soot and charcoal like Only this. Only Lagavulin, yeah. Um, like Lagavulin is usually much more regal, as you uh, yes, said. Yes, yes. Fruity. This has got... Dirty. Dirty, yes. Dirty. Dirt. Dirty, dirty. Mm. So I think I mentioned this a couple times on my YouTube videos before, but uh, both houses I grew up in had a wood-burning fireplace. Oh, yeah. The house my dad lives in now, which I lived in from probably 10 to 18 until I went off to school, yeah. had a fireplace, but then it had an ash pit on the outside of the house that you could open up a little door and take out the ash so you didn't have to bring it through the house, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So I was tasked with cleaning that, unfortunately. There is a little bit of that note in there, without question. Okay. If you drop a little bit of that old, burnt uh, chimney ash in there. And again, yeah. it is very ash, very charcoal. It is very campfire but in a more aggressive way is probably the best way yeah. to say it with this particular one and being that it's cast strength that it makes sense to some degree that you're getting it right at its source but the linger after you swallow mm -hmm. then the meaty carne oh, just yeah. kind of comes back and then at the very end if you swallow for maybe 30 seconds then here comes the pineapple uh, some lighter fruits maybe even something citrus like a like a light orange yeah. And a light peach, it's right there. So, what I was thinking about when I was drinking this is earlier, I, I brought over the Offerman, the 11 year Foggable, which is, I mean, it's good. It, there's nothing special about it's it. It's solid whiskey, not solid whiskey compared to the. Right. But the reason why I bring it up is I poured that next to, I don't know if it was this one or a different uh, log one we had today. We did we did it for, against the 18 as a control check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what blew me away was just how much sweeter and how much more like it was in line with kind of the core range. Mm -hmm. This, as we talk about being dirty, I just really want to stress that this is so much more dirty, rich, complex, and but it's just, this is off the Lagavulin like upfront profile, but yet mm -hmm. it's still got all the Lagavulin sweetness and flavors. You know, we are uh, both members of a Facebook group where we talk about whiskey, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a selling group, but basically, you know, we post our, our whiskey bottles and people, you know, say, hey, is this this, is this that? Yeah. So every time I get one of these specialty uh, facial lagging ones that are cast strength, I don't care if it's the 16 year old cast strength, 18, 19, one of these distillery team picks, a Jazz Fest pick, everyone says, how's it compared to the 12 and the 16 year old, the normal ones? It makes sense. Lagavulin only has three core range whiskeys. You know, the eight, the 16. Oh, 
and the distillery pick, and then the 12 year old is every year, but you know, it's the Diageo. Well, as we know, we're not getting one of those this year in America. It's, it's Diageo's best release, and we're not getting one yeah. 19. So, everyone tries to compare them to one of those three or four, depending on how you want to um, view it, uh, normal Lagavulins, yeah. let's say. And this really isn't a normal Lagavulin in any way, shape, or form. You know, there are some similarities to 12 being that's cast strength, yeah. and that's not as sherry mature to say the 16 year old, or definitely the distiller's edition, but that doesn't mean that it's similar to those whiskeys. No. These are really The 12 is so like smooth and creamy. This is this is the cigar whiskey of the Lagavulins. This is a very Lagavulin alcohol forward yes. version of their whiskey. But I think the dirty term you used earlier, and very in, dirty. in the best way possible. <clears throat> yes. I, I really. The more we kind of talk about this, the more I really do enjoy it. Um, it's it's just more complex. Now I had, we added a little bit of water to this, actually a decent amount of water. That helps. You know to kind of bring it down. Now one thing I will say for sure, and this is something that I've um, noticed over multiple tastings with this particular bottle, is it sweetens up quite a bit. Yep. Sweetens up quite a bit. Now the X Moscatel casks are not as sweet as, as say a PX cask or an Oloroso or Sherry cask, at least in my opinion. Well, and this is exposure. not a first fill either. This is correct. I mean, you saw the color, guys. It's it's not. This it, is probably six months, and it's probably was well used before it came in here. Correct. They're probably not fresh cask, or, or I, I dare to say, probably tired casks. Yeah, but you know, with the finishing, it's adding a nice subtleness to it. It's adding something else. And I, it's, I, I almost think that was on purpose. I agree. So, again, I, I know it was on purpose, but I think this gave us the desired result of I, the showcasing lag of one in an ex-bourbon cask, similar to the 12-year-old, but just not the same whiskey as the 12-year-old. Obviously, it's aged four more years, but it's a different kind of European ex-wine cask. And I gotta tell you, man, I'm a fan of it. I, you know, with a lot of these, I was expecting Lagavulin 16 on steroids. Yeah. It isn't this, it's nope. different, but there's enough Lagavulin in there to understand where I'm at, but at the same time, it's a completely different whiskey experience. Yeah, I mean, you, it's unmistakable. This is Lagavulin, but this is Lagavulin you've just not had with the core range. At all. And it's, they've really, it, and it's not like 12 years that they just aged it four more years and got some more oak. No. At all, like this is, they found a way to bring in some sherry casks in a different way. Mm -hmm. There's a bite, a bitterness here that is, they picked barrels they wanted to be bitter. I, I guarantee you they wanted... A, this was well thought out. You know what? This wasn't an accident. So, years ago, mm -hmm. the Spurs, Greg Popovich, one of my favorite NBA coaches, mm -hmm. told his team, I want a little more nasty. I think somebody drinking Lagavulin when they bottled this said, I want a little more nasty. And that is exactly what they did. It's a good way to say it. You're right. <laughs> if you like a Lagavulin 16 and you just want to get more aggressive with it, cast strength, yeah. but just want to give more of an essence of Lagavulin, this is a bottle for you without question. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I, this is really good whiskey. And I tell you what, man, with water, good goodness. It is so sweet on the nose. It's opened up so much more. Now, with a little bit of water in it, let's see what it does to the palate. I've been drinking, by the way. <laughs> Give it to me, what do you think? I mean, it, it is exactly what we've been talking about. It's it's sweet, it's got that little bit of, it's briny, it's got a little bit of a bitterness, it's got, it, it, again, it, this is what I'm going back to, the Lafroig and Ardbeg, mm -hmm. their bitterness and peat, mm -hmm. it's got a little bit of that. But it's it's the Lagavulin. It's got the sweetness, the malt. It's own thing. It's got the Lagavulin malt. Mm -hmm, for but sure. But it's starting to get some of that harshness. And what the funny thing is, this is 18 years. This is supposed 16. to... So 16. Okay, 16. 16. Years, I, I apologize. Yeah, you know, 16. Even at 16, you're supposed to be starting to get mellow and it's starting to calm the peat. Instead, this is just bringing it up and it's amped up and it's really fun. You know, I've had older Lagavulins. You know, I've had 25, I had the 30 one time, you know, I've had different versions of the 21. Yeah. This one for a 16, man, it feels like it's just popping. Yeah. You know I mean? This is a very aggressive whiskey, period. You know, when I had the second uh, sip with water, yeah, I'm getting a lot of the same flavors. I'm getting the charcoal right away. Um, the Lagavulin, you know, distillery characteristic, and then finally that pineapple right here at the end. But I gotta tell you, if you gave this to me and I put a good dollop of water in it and said it didn't have water in it, I'd believe you. It is that thick. Mm -hmm. It is that dense of a malt. Yeah. I think, general. I mean, there's just an alcohol bite here. 
You see, when you say alcohol, I just think it is just high ABV laggable. But what I want to say is though, it's not a, it's not the bad alcohol where you're like, ooh, it's young and spirity. No, no, no. There's just a nice bit of alcohol here that doesn't go away with water, and it's it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, water. It's amazing how water opened up the nose. Oh, actually, that's not amazing. Water usually opens up the nose, but it kept the palate so consistent as far mm -hmm. as the punch, the viscosity. It's really impressive. Anyway, yeah. this is a bottle that I've actually thought enough of that I've actually bought another one on a separate occasion. So I went out of my way to find another 2017 Distillery Team exclusive, 54.1 uh, laggable one. So I've had the 18, I had the 16 before that. I wasn't as impressed with that one as I is that as I am this, but it's a yeah. wine, it's a wine barbecue, and for me, I'm at a 90 out of 100. So I told uh, Mike, and I had a little taste of this before we get went on here, and I two. was struggling. Yeah, I do now. <laughs> so um, I was struggling to figure out where I was at, and um, I'm going to go 91. Out of 100. Out of 100, yeah. yeah. The, that bite on the finish at first, I wasn't sure if that was a good thing or not. Oh, it's a good thing. And that's why I was thinking it could even go as low as an 89. Mm -hmm. But as I've had water and I'm getting the complexity... Still the same punch. I and you know mm. I I'm a hard grader. 91 is a really high score for me. So if you want a laggable in 16 is, with a little bit less sherry, but just more. If you want a laggable in 16 and a 12 mixed together with a little bit of sherry, but not as much as the 16. And maybe just, a shot of Ardbeg 10 in there. Right, just a, 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 <laughs> a gritty, cast strength Ardbeg 10. Gritty aggressive version of it. Yeah. I tell you what, this is a great one to pick up. I cannot. Uh, Tell you guys enough. What's the price point on this one going to be? This one I got for 114 pounds, which I recently found out was a much different unit of measure. Yeah, than you're kind of about 20 percent difference. Yeah, I think uh, it's a buck twenty, buck thirty range. Well, it's a it's a 1.3 to one pounds, two dollars, and the side I bought it off of, I was not familiar with the difference between the symbol of euro and pound, so I assumed it was euro, which was a 1.17 to one. So it was 114 plus 1.3. Plus shipping, so it's about 150 bucks, 160 bucks or so. Yeah, I mean, not, not ridiculous, um, especially since Lagavulin <clears throat> standard is about 80 dollars here. The distillery, um, uh, Lagavulin distillery edition is yeah. about 110. Lagavulin 12 is about 130 here. I mean, let's be honest, this would be two, three hundred dollars if it actually was sold in America. Yeah, when you, in reality, when you do the numbers. Yeah, no, it, it's a really good one. So, and if you guys ever, if you're a Lagavulin fan like I am, I'm a severe Lagavulin lover. If this is something, um, a story that you like, I can't recommend it enough. I think you really enjoy it. Again, I'm a 90 of 100. Dustin's a 91. And we want to thank you for once again joining for another whiskey review. And until next time. I have no idea what I'm supposed to say. Happy drinking. <laughs> <laughs>